Pane předsedo, nejdůležitějším tématem uplynulé Evropské... Thank you very much. Now, the most important topic in this European Council was the economy and stability in the Eurozone. But as you know, uh, most of the uh, MEPs from my group are not included in the Eurozone. It's not that we want the Eurozone to fail. Of course not. We want Europe to prosper. We want governments to act responsibly. Uh, that will put an end to debt and uh, also go for fiscal reform. And of course, we want governments to plump for um, budget discipline. We're in favor of all of this. What bothers us is the hidden agenda that some countries and the European Commission are pushing forward. And uh, there are also political groups that are uh, pushing this hidden agenda and exploiting the crisis in order to get more powers, to move forward when it comes to uh, tax harmonization and taking steps towards a uh, tax union. We say no to a fiscal union. We don't want this. I have been here since 2004, and every time there are difficulties, I hear people utter the same sentence. We need more Europe. We need the community method. We need more community, uh, more of the community method. And my answer to that is no, we don't need more of this. It, it is this that has brought us to our knees and brought us to the situation that we find ourselves in. We have exhausted uh, the possibilities of European integration. Let us stop living uh, in the past, uh, 50 years ago. Europe has changed, the reality has changed, and the uh, quicker you realize, the better it will be for you. Thank you, Madam President. Every time the EU is confronted with a specific problem, it often call, falls into the trap of devising a complex, bureaucratic, heavy-handed solution which is often completely disproportionate to the severity of the issue. And this is the mistake that we are now making with regard to the current financial crisis. It is serious, it does require action, but many of the proposed solutions will have far-reaching and, in my view, highly damaging effects for the long-term future of Europe. The opportunity is being seized by many to launch plans for permanent economic governance with intervention and control as its guiding principles. The solution, we are told, is to firstly abuse the existing rules, such as Article 122 of the Treaty, which was never intended for the bailouts that it has been used to pay for, and my hope is that some country will have the courage to challenge it in the European courts and to impose more limitations on our member states, which means in reality constraining the democratic choice of many of the electorates. Thank you very much. The new financial architecture in the EU is based on an attempt to strengthen the sound rules of finance and public expenditure and quite an unsound tendency to curb financial sovereignty and fiscal sovereignty of member states. I do doubt that the Euro Plus uh, countries are able to impose such rules on them uh, collectively if they were not able to do it individually. But the consolidation of the tax base is definitely an effective step towards a fiscal union which has got only one objective, uh, the elimination of fiscal competition in the EU. En beveel lidstaten een begrotingsbeleid gevoerd. Thank you. It's been a long time that we've been fighting this battle. And for a long time, uh, debt wasn't a problem. We felt that uh, the snow would melt in the sun and individuals would take out consumer loans, um, get huge mortgages because they would buy big houses. But now, uh, because of the crisis, there are more loans to be taken out. The ECB has had to take out loans in order to make sure that Greece, Ireland and other countries are bailed out. So it's going to take we're going to spend years trying to get out of the situation, but it's not going to be easy because our economies are shrinking, and in some cases countries are tottering on the brink of, brink of bankruptcy. 
Now, those countries facing bankruptcy have to take the necessary measures. They have to devalue their currency and reduce their debt. MEPs flocked to sign up to campaigns for cyclists and horse welfare, but when it came to campaigning to cut red tape for small businesses, only a third of us joined in, and only one UK Labour signature. The Commission promises to unlock venture capital. Laudable, but almost laughable, given that you spent all of your last year trying to legislate it out of the market altogether. It's time to walk the walk. Nine heads of states have signed a letter with specific actions for business, trade, innovation and investment. They call us to choose growth, and I certainly do.